Turn with me over to uh, Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. You know, I, um, I was talking with somebody last week, and, and I, I told him, I said, I, I hate this time of year um, because you have, you have so much that goes on from Thanksgiving with Christmas, people having family get-togethers, and it just seems like that there's just no consistency from, uh, from one week to the other, not just in church, but just... You know, just generally, it just seems like it just throws kind of, kind of uh, yeah, the whole normal routine, you know, off. And, uh, and, and so, and I don't, I just don't like that. And, uh, but, uh, you know, and, and, and what he said to me, um, it was, you know, it really shouldn't matter one way or the other because, uh, and, you know, in, in other words, in God, you should always be riding that high. You should always be consistent. Your routine is in God, and it's not dependent upon your, uh, your situation. It's not dependent on the holiday season. It's not dependent on what people are doing and when they're out and when they're not in, which is absolutely correct. And, and I have a tendency, particularly this year, to, as, as, as God has, um, has just moved in in this church and in our lives and, and where, uh, where my own personal walk with him um, and relationship with him has gone just this year alone to uh, I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat analytical by nature. And so I like to, I, I, I'm, I've gotten used to that awareness of his presence. I've moved into a place in my relationship with God that I'm aware of his presence. Now, uh, let me let me make one thing clear. We we are not moved by what we see. We're not moved by what we feel, you know. And and so we don't we don't make decisions based on that. But you also know where you are spiritually. You know when you've allowed yourself to to let other things come in and distract you. And you know when your focus isn't where it's supposed to be. And those are the kinds of things that I've been just uh, analyzing and, and, and thinking about in relation to, to my own relationship. Um, and and I've, noticed, I've noticed some things over the past month or two with some different things that have been going on. I've kind of noticed that I'm not praying in the Spirit as much as I was wow. a, couple of, a couple of months ago. <laughs> what, Wendy? I've noticed the same thing. Okay, so it's not. Okay, so see, Wendy started it, and it somehow it, it, it affected me. No, um, and and I didn't. You know, sometimes we can allow. The Bible talks about it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. Sometimes we can allow little situations, little things come in. We can allow business situations. We can allow family situations. Not that I've stopped praying in the Spirit or any of those kinds of things, but I've just noticed that that my my routine, my spiritual routine, and my relationship has been uh, hasn't been what it was. In, in some of the things that I do because of, of how busy that I've been. So how do, how do I address that? Let's go over to Proverbs chapter 4. Because I want to share some things that the Lord's been talking to me about that I believe is specifically needed for this time. In Proverbs chapter 4, and let's look at verse 20. My son, attend to my words. Incline your ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are or flow the issues of of life. Let's go back to verse 20 for a moment. My son, attend to my words. In other words, you need to give attention to the things that I am saying. And more importantly than that, Jesus said over and over, um, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. So I want you to see this from God's perspective. Attend 
to my words. Attend to what I am saying. Now, we are spirit beings. We have a spiritual relationship with Jesus Christ. We are joined with him. God is our Father. And so he is talking to us every day. And we've got to be aware of what God is saying to us. If you're not hearing God's voice, if you're not uh, aware of what He wants you to do today, it's not God's fault. We have to take a look at what's gone on, identify the mistakes that we have made, and make sure that we are back in a place that we are giving attention to what He is saying giving attention to his word. Now, let's go on for just a moment. My son, attend to my words. Incline your ear unto my sayings. In other words, there's hearing that's involved. You've got to listen to what God is saying. Somebody say listen. Listen. The old English uh, King James likes to use the word hearken. Hearken. Heart. Hearken. What does it mean? It means to listen intently with the intent to do what you're listening to. To listen intently with the intent to do it. In other words, you're not just listening and just accepting it and just saying, okay, I I, I went to church and I heard it. No, you're listening with the intent to do. If, 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 uh, If somebody is teaching you how to cook something, and, and, and you want, you know, maybe, maybe your mother has a favorite recipe, and you want to learn how to do that recipe. You're going to watch her. You're going to listen intently to her instructions so that you can do it exactly the same way. You're not just going to just say, well, mom, I'm over here at the kitchen, and I'm listening to what you say, and I'll get it. No, you're paying attention. Glory to God. Let them not... The Word of God. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For that word, it's life. Somebody say life. It is life unto those that find them. And it is health. Somebody say health. It is medicine to all your flesh. Life to those. Your life is in where your attention is. If your attention is on the Word of God, if you're listening to what God is saying, then life is a result that comes out of that. There's healing to your flesh. You don't deal, you know, what happens is as you, as you allow yourself to, to slip down into and descend into worldly things and just to allow everyday life to surround you and to capture your imaginations and your thoughts and your attention, then what happens is, is that you start uh, experiencing some things that you don't want to happen in life. Because you have, in a sense, you've kind of fallen out of that place where you're supposed to be with God, where faith is constantly working. Life to those that uh, 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 find them. Health to all their flesh. Keep your heart. Guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it flows the issues of life. Mark chapter 4, and I'm not going to spend the time going through there, talks about the sower sows the word. Where is the word sown? It's sown into the heart. As you sow seed, as you meditate in the word, as you speak the Word of God, as you listen to the Word of God, as you look at the Word of God, as you make that a part of of your life where your focus is, you're sowing those things into your heart. Now, you've got a decision to make. As you receive it, do you receive it with gladness? Do you understand it with the intent to do it? Those that will do what they are hearing God say and It starts here as you meditate in the Word of God, but there's also Word that comes and revelation that comes as you pray in the Spirit. The Bible says over in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, it says that he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks the mysteries of God. You're speaking to God and you're speaking the mysteries of God. And then if you back up to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it talks about the hidden wisdom and that as we speak the hidden wisdom, that power comes out of that. Paul said that your faith not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak mysteries. Where did he get that from? Praying it out. 
You need direction for your life? Pray in the Spirit. It should be a part of, of, of your day. Well, I don't know how to pray in the Spirit. Well, talk to me afterwards and we'll get that fixed. Glory to God. The baptism of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Luke chapter 10. In Luke chapter 10, verse 38. Now, it came to Christmas time. No, it came to pass. Man, are y'all even up with me tonight? Come on. I think that if you'll read this with a view of the season that we're going into, that it applies. Now, it came to pass. As they went, that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Now, understand this. Jesus came in with his disciples, with his entourage, and he, uh, thanks for that, son. He says, here, making faces at me, acting like he's agreeing with everything that I'm saying. And I don't even know if he's listening to a word. But uh, <laughs> he brings his, his entourage into this lady's house. Now, ladies, let me think about it for a moment. Um, you know, some, uh, some prophet of God uh, comes into your house and brings all of his staff with them, 12, at least 12, maybe more than that, and... You know, what are you going to do? Most, what'd you say? Jennifer said, cater. <laughs> I'm going right up the road to Chick-fil-A, baby. <laughs> they didn't have a Chick-fil-A at the time. So it being Martha's house, she felt the responsibility to take care of all of them, to serve them. Now, nowhere in this story does it say that Jesus asked to be served. She took it on herself and allowed this burden, if you will, to weigh on her and felt like that she had to do these things. Otherwise, she would not be fulfilling her responsibility, uh, uh, fulfilling her obligation, and people would be upset, and she was afraid of offending people, making people mad. It's the prophet of God. Well, as she is serving, uh, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. But as she's serving and as she's uh, trying to figure out how am I going to get enough, of enough food together, how am I going to get it all done, she gets to looking over and there's her sister not doing a thing except just sitting there, just hanging out with the prophet. And she began to think about it. She allowed, maybe she was jealous that she was over there, or maybe she just absolutely felt like that uh, she was the victim and had a victim mentality, you know, because look at everything that I'm doing. Oh, my God, yes, I see that. Look at everything that I'm doing. Jesus, you should be looking, you should be thanking me and, and expecting that her doing was the right thing, whereas Mary wasn't concerned about the doing as much as she was about listening to the Word of God. 
Sometimes we get so busy with our doing and we think that that's what will get God's attention. That's what's going to cause blessing in our life that we forget that we've got to sow the seed of the Word of God into our life. That's the first thing, our first responsibility. It doesn't matter what else is going on. It doesn't matter when your family comes uh, together for Christmas. It doesn't matter about all the Christmas presents that you feel like you have to buy. We place on ourselves all of these Oh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We place on ourselves all of these responsibilities. It's not really the word, but um, expectations. That's the word. Expectations, we sometimes define them for ourselves instead of really just listening to the Word of God, being led by the Spirit of God, being at rest. Did you know that you can be at rest during the Christmas season? It's possible, but most people don't. Most people get so frazzled because of what's going on and distracted because of what's going on. Now look at this. Martha was cumbered. The Amplified says Martha was overly occupied and too busy. I'm going to read that again. Martha was overly occupied and too busy. In other words, probably the thought of listening to the Word wasn't even a thought in her mind because she was so busy with what she had to do and so burdened with the care of this thing that she forgot that the Word is the most important thing. She was distracted with much serving. And she came up to him and said, Lord, is it nothing to you that my sister has left me to serve alone? See, she then tried to put the guilt trip on Jesus. If I feel bad about this, I want to make sure that everybody else feels bad about this too and understands my plight and recognizes what a, uh, what, you know, what a good job I'm doing of serving and, and, and you know, how hard I'm slaving over this. You know? and, and they just seem to be in there just partying and not even paying attention to what I'm doing. If you are doing what you're doing so that other people will see what you're doing, then you've done it for the wrong reason. We must grow up and move to the place that the things that we do to serve isn't done so that others will uh, give us praise or glory or thanks for the things that we do. Amen. Jesus said over in Matthew chapter 6 that if you give so that other people know that you gave, then you have your reward. You will not get a harvest. There will not be anything else that happens. If you fast and, and, and make sure that people know that you're fasting, see, then, you're, then your heart's not pure. If you're saying things, if you're, um, uh, what did he say? He talked about your prayers. If you're praying, how many of you have gone to family get-togethers and there's the one guy that they'll pick to pray, and, and he'll, he'll start out, Oh God, forgive us of all of our sins. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Pat, quit picking that fella. Forgive us of our sins. And he'll pray for five minutes about everybody, and Thank you. Yeah, the, the food's getting cold the whole time. And he, he's not even praying about the food. And finally, at the end, he'll say, and bless this food to the nurse from our bodies. Amen. And everybody. And, and look, let's just be honest. I mean, my goodness. Come on, people. We, we can be real in church. Everybody that's there is like, when will he shut up? There's no, no, nobody, nobody is, is in that prayer thinking, thinking, man, this is, this is so good. Yes, Lord, I agree with this. So, so, so why is it that sometimes people and like that, they pray, they pray to be heard. And maybe they're, I can't judge everybody. I'm just saying that you've got those that 
they, they want to be heard for their prayers. Well, it, it didn't rise above their nose, you know. I mean, because they were doing it for other benefit instead of just having relationship with God. Now, Martha adopted the same attitude. Jesus, don't you see what I'm doing? Come on. You're spending time with all of them, but look at what I'm doing. And what you do doesn't move God. What you do doesn't create a blessing for on your behalf. That's Old Testament. That's law. But when you go to what God has already done and receive it by faith. And that's where Mary was. Mary was like, man, forget the food. We got the one with the word of life here right now. Maybe Jesus, maybe this is the first time that he had ever come through and stayed at their house. What is she going to do? She said, I'm going to sit here and I got to, this is my one opportunity. I'm going to soak in everything that I can. I can go a day without eating. You know, yeah, Martha's going to be mad at me, but she's my sister. She'll, she'll get over it eventually. But I'm going to get the word of God. Your family will get over it. They will. Make sure that the word is first place. Look at what happened here. Lord, is it nothing to you that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me because you know I can't get through to her. Tell her then to help me to lend a hand and do her part. Now, there's another problem that we have. Sometimes we, we do what we think we're supposed to do and then automatically apply that to everybody else. Because I'm doing this, they should at least bring dessert. <laughs> so we put expectations on people based on how we live our life as opposed to just serving. And if they don't show up with dessert, then they eat what's there. And what happens is we'll let offense get in the way because of our expectations that we place on them instead of just loving them for who and where they are. Amen. All right. We'll keep going. But the Lord replied to her by saying, Martha, Martha, any time God says your name twice, it is not for a good reason. You go study that out. Anytime Jesus said the name twice, it was not to give praise. You're about to hear something that you don't want to hear. He says, you are anxious and troubled. That's the amplified. King James says, careful and troubled about what? It wasn't, look, it wasn't just this one dinner. This was just one of many things that she had let come into her life, had let distract her, and, and this was just a, a, a symptom of a larger problem. This was the way that she was just kind of wired. She let care and anxiety about everything in her life distract her. From the word of God. He says. But there is need. There is only one thing. That's needful. Somebody say one thing. thing. There is only one thing. That's needful. I don't care what happens. In your life. I don't care what's going on. Around Christmas times. It, it's, it's busy. You got family things that you've got to do, deal with. You got uh, 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 work stuff that you've got to deal with. You feel like you have to buy presents for everybody out there. You know, you place all these expectations and allow society to place all these expectations on you. But I will tell you that during this time, there is only one thing that is needful. 
There is only one thing that is needful. There's only one thing that's going to, uh, that will keep you in a place where your faith and your trust is in God so that you know that your needs are supplied for this Christmas season. There's only one thing that is needful that will keep you in a place that you're in peace and that you're at rest and that you're not allowing the hustle and the bustle and the, and, 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 and the, the frenzied state that people go through during this time. There's so many people that are just tired of Christmas because of all the stuff that surrounds it and the commercialization around it. We don't have to participate in that. We can go back to the place that one thing is needful for us. I'm not saying don't buy presents for people. You know, I mean, uh, then that would really make things, you know, kind of weird down the road. But uh, what I am saying is don't let that distract you from what's going on or from the one thing that's in, uh, that you need in your life. Don't allow that. Don't, as things start trying to come in, don't start trying to figure out, okay, uh, what can I what can I cut out to so that it's going to make me more time? Uh, well, maybe I can cut out Wednesday night, or maybe I can cut out some of my prayer time, or maybe, and, and don't go to the spiritual and look for those things as the place to start trying to cut out, because with what measure you sow, uh, well, let's try that again, with what um, measure you meet, it shall be measured back to you again. The time that you spend measuring to the Word of God, the time that you'll uh, uh, spend measuring measuring to your prayer time, the, the time that you'll spend sowing the Word of God, you will reap that time back in abundance. Let us walk in the Spirit during this time. Glory to God. There is one thing that's needful. Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Now, turn with me over to the book of Colossians. Chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Um, in Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. If you are risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. See, we have been risen with Him. We have been made to sit in heavenly places with Him. That is where, in the Spirit, that is where my address is. I'm seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Glory to God. I, have, I am seated right there. I am a member of the body. I am part of the body of Christ. And I am, I, I've been risen with Him far above all principalities and powers in every name that is named. Glory to God. In, in heaven above, in the earth, and in the earth beneath. Glory to God. That's my position. That's my rightful position. I can enforce that position so that Satan can't come and attack me. I can resist him and he will flee. Now thanks be unto God who always causes me to triumph in Christ Jesus because I recognize where my place is in Jesus Christ. So if you are risen with Christ, then seek those things which are above. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, but without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. As you sow your time into the word of God, you diligently seek the Word of God. You diligently seek God. You, you, you seek Him first. Sounds a lot like seek first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. As that becomes your focus, man, supply begins to happen in you. If you are risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Now look at verse 2. Set your affection on things above and not on the things on the earth. 
The Amplified says it this way. Set your minds and keep them set on what is above, the higher things. But I love that phrase. It's, it's, it's emphatic. Set your minds and keep them set. In other words, where your focus is, where your attention is, what the things that you think about uh, during the day and the things that, you, that, that are important to you during the day, it's up to you where you're going to set your attention. Your attention doesn't get drawn away. Other people don't cause you to move where you focus. Let me use... Um, let me use the little Alabama Auburn football as a uh, as a, as an illustration for a moment. Okay, uh, Auburn's offensive style. What their coach does is is they try to employ a lot of deception. And so, what you'll see if you if you watch football is is there'll be a lot of right before they snap the football, there'll be a lot of moving parts and. And they'll fake a handoff, and the whole time he'll maybe hold the ball behind his back. They'll do a lot of things. Other people will go behind him, and he'll fake like he's handing off to him. And there's a lot of moving parts. So on Alabama's side, because Coach Nick Saban is, a, is, is, is defensive in the way that, that he approaches football, what he teaches his players is you have to have um, um, uh, good, what, yeah, it's the eye on the ball. You have to have good eye discipline. In other words, don't allow all the stuff that's going on to move you from keeping your eye on the ball. As long as you keep seeing the ball, you won't get fooled by the deception that is trying to be employed. And as long as the defense can maintain good eye discipline, then they're going to be in a better position to stop the play. Well, I would say that we as believers need to maintain good eye discipline. That while there's a lot of things that, would like to, that, that Satan would like to try to bring into our life, whether it's business-related, family-related, uh, um, uh, fellow employee-related, Christmas related, whatever it is, that the focus, or, or, or not the focus, but that the intent is to try to move your eye off of what you should be focused on. And that when you move your eye and allow yourself to be distracted by all of these things, that what happens is, is that you stop focusing on things that are above. And it's in the the Bible says in Romans chapter 12 that we are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. That what happens is as we set our mind on the things that are above, set our affection on the things of God, set our, our, our eyes on the Word of God, listen to what He has to say, that, is that, main, that as we maintain our focus on that, then it says, out of our heart will flow the issues of life. Glory to God. It becomes healing and health to our flesh. Amen. Amen. So, I'd like for um, uh, Selena, do you mind playing for, for a few minutes? Now, I have a question to ask you that I'd like for you to think about over the next week. Okay? Um, very serious question. And, and I, I would like to have some discussion about this. So it's not just um, a question. Um, Pat, would you come on up here? Because I want you to share what you, um, what you shared with me yesterday. Uh, it's not a question. What? Oh, I will. Um, it's not a question that... A rhetorical question I really want you to think about it as it applies to you and what your answer to this question is for most of this year 
we have been we've been talking about the importance of of the body the importance of of you taking the gospel out uh, the importance of you doing the works of Jesus outside of this church okay and so what I want to know and I know that some, that some of you to a to a measure have have begun to, to step out a little bit outside of the church but I would say that by and large most of us or, or the church in general hasn't really allowed God to use us outside of this church in the measure that he wants to use us how many of you would, would agree with that okay so just me right <laughs> So the question I have for you is, what's holding you back? If you, and, and for some of you, it may not be an answer to that question. It's like, I, I, I give 100% every time that I get a chance. But I really want to know, what is it that would keep you from going up to somebody in Walmart and ministering healing to them? What is it that keeps you from sharing and speaking the word of God into the lives of people at, your, at the workplace. What is it that holds you back? Now, we could come up with answers tonight, but that's not what I want you to do. I want you to think about it. I want you to examine yourself because we're going to deal with it. This is not about us keep preaching something over and over and over again you know, until you finally get it. You, you identify what the issue is, you deal with it, and you move on. Get it done. Because I'm so excited about what God has for us in 2015. You know, what the Lord has been sharing with us has just been, um, just been phenomenal. It's just uh, what we see coming is uh, Jennifer and I get so excited about what we see in the Spirit. And it is about it's about being doers of the word and not hearers only. So that's kind of my task for you. Pat shared something with me yesterday that I believe is just going to bless you. Yes. Good. I'm going to add a whole bunch to it. <laughs> said something about how uh, Jesus took the, he was feeding the 5,000 and he took the, took the fish and he raised it up and blessed it to the Father. And, and then I said he, when he got it back down, he started distributing it out and, and, and they didn't run out until they quit dividing it up. And uh, I heard a fellow say that, that uh, and, and then you know just next chapter over, they fed the 4,000, and, and what Jesus did, uh, he blessed it, but, he, but he, uh, he thanked God for it, he raised up thank was thankful for it, and of course they did the same thing, they distributed it out, and I heard a guy say, thanking God will change the, change the molecules in whatever you're doing and it'll multiply and it did right there and then another scripture that I heard him use was was in Luke 17 it starts in uh, verse 11 where Jesus was walking through Samaria and Galilee and the, and the, and the ten leopards was there and, and he told them and of course they, they must have knew Jesus because they hollered at him. They was far off, and they saw him. They lifted up their voices, and Jesus, Master, had mercy on us. So they must have knew something. And the only thing Jesus told them was, go show the priest that you're here. And then it says, and it came to pass that as they went, they were made clean. 
so they didn't see it until they went. They went on the word of what Jesus said. Yep. Now, uh, you know, then the one guy came back. He fell on his knees and thanked Jesus and praised him. And what happened to him? He was made whole. So that thanking, that thanksgiving changed his body. The mother and I didn't get it. So now, you know, I, I said that then, you know, and I said, well, you ought to take when you get your, when you get a check, a paycheck, you ought to bless it and then put it in the bank and then it'll multiply and it won't run. Well, you know, I ought to listen to what I say. <laughs> it was one of them, if you have ears to hear, deals. Well, I hadn't been doing that. And, you know, I live in a real nice house and everything, but it takes a lot to run all that stuff. And if you don't stay up with everything, you can get behind. Well, I was getting behind. And uh, we had some money come in. checks were coming in. I went to church one time that one of the ten things they said was checks in the mail. Well, I said that and I get checks in the mail. <laughs> and uh, that's the only good thing that came out of that deal. But <laughs> anyway, I, anyway, I went in there to Jane and I says, okay, one place Jesus blessed, another place he thanked you for. So I lifted that. It was a, somebody paid on a charge card. Directly in the bank, and I need a bunch of money. Y'all sit around and think you need a thousand or two thousand. I need like twenty or thirty. Uh, so it's just a bunch of zeros. That's the only difference. And I all don't mean nothing. That's what got something from it. But anyway, so I lifted it up and I said, now I'm going to prove this out. And I told it to James. And we prayed. I lifted it up, blessed it, thanked God for it. That was in the morning like at 10 o'clock. We went to, this was Tuesday. Yesterday was Tuesday, right? And then we went to the room and we came back and I said, checks in the I put three checks in the room. Now, you know, you can sit there and say, well, it was coming anyway. Well, it wasn't there to do it. I mean, I needed it three weeks ago. Why didn't I get my lightning fast mind on this so, now, then those three checks came in. So I take those three checks, and I thank God for this. I thank God all the time, but I wasn't doing this one thing. I mean, I thank Him for everything, everything. You get up in the morning, sit on my porch, and I thank God. Uh, but I took those three checks. It was like $2,700.
I've got a story about righteousness. We got time to tell you? Three minutes. My son, Brian Daniel Rowe, he understands the righteousness. He understands the kingdom of his dad. And he uses it. He does. He's, he's had and got and did. Anything he wants is there. And he expects it to be there. That's what God wants us to see and understand about his kingdom. It's there. That's why you have to renew your mind. I don't have to renew Daniel's mind with this. Oh, no. He got mama. <laughs> he grew up in it. He knows the kingdom of family. And he pulls on it anytime he wants to. I'm understanding more and more of the kingdom of God. And that's where I want to live. That's where I want to stay. That's the only way I want to think. See, in His righteousness, His righteousness is where you have to renew your mind to know you think that way. It's a way, the kingdom is a way of thinking. It's permission to run something, to rule in something. And you, and you have to know it's there, it's all free. He's paid, it's all free. That's good. <laughs> That's exactly what I wanted. Dad, can you come here for a minute, please? Dad. Um, so, the, the, two things out of that. There's a, a, plenty of things. Number one is, is while he shared with us something that, that the Lord had, 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 had kind of told him, uh, he didn't do it. Just... Um, just having a revelation of it doesn't mean that it's going to automatically work for you. Just listening to it doesn't mean. Now, again, what did Jesus do? He, everything, you know, just the loaves and the fishes, he took what it was. And while the disciples said, it's not enough, Jesus never saw it as not enough. He saw it as supply and then being thankful for it, blessing it, so take whatever the natural mind would say is not enough. And don't look at it that way. Thank God for it. Father, I thank you for this hundred dollars that, that came in. And so right now, in the name of Jesus, I bless it. I bless it. And I thank you that every one of my needs are supplied. And it multiplies in Jesus' name. That's looking into heaven. That's receiving out of the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. I just believe that you have something to add to that. <laughs> See, Dad, Dad gets the whole part that every, every joint... Uh, has a supply every service. He says, I always have something, and he's exactly right. Go for it. Well, you do know I'm God's favorite son. I got prophesied to in Colorado. It was me. No, no, no. And Mark called me an apostle last week. So <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what an apostle is, but that's okay. Pat and I got turned on to this stuff over 35 years ago, and we've never had enough. But in all of these 35 years, we've always had more than enough. Anything God's ever impressed me to do, I think, how are we going to do that? I never made a trip anyplace else to out of the country and had the money before the day I went. A lot of times got it when I got there. God's looking for somebody to show himself strong in their behalf. And if you'll keep planting this seed of the Word of God, it'll do things that will absolutely astound you. Now, I'm bragging on the Word here. We went to our first Kenneth Hagin meeting over 40 years ago. Didn't own a tape, and I looked at those tapes and, and just cried. And said, you know, if I could get this Word, it changed my life. And the Lord spoke to me. He says, well, when you get this Word and it changed your life, give them away. We've given away somewhere between 1.5 million and 2 million tapes free post-made. I, I didn't have a tape. Didn't have a duplicator. 
and God made a way. We've given away three airplanes. We've given away, as of last week, 68 cars. And when God told me, he said, I want you to be a place of blessing. I was the least blessed person in the world. And every time we've given anything, I had to believe God to get it before I could give it. You know, it's not like I've got millions of dollars in the bank, you know. Uh, I've always had less than a thousand. You know, just barely enough to get through the week. Every month had to believe God to make my house payment. Hello! But here's the thing. If you're doing it this way, if you're doing it by the Word, you absolutely are not limited Come on. to anything. Come on. It's not based on your income. It's not based on what you can sell. It's based on this limitless supply. In the Greek actually says it this way, Philippians 4, 19. And the God of me will supply the need of you according to the riches of him. Come on. Come what Paul was saying is, you know, you've read it, you've heard it. He said, I know how to abound and I know how to abase. What he was saying is, it really doesn't matter how much money I got in my pocket. It doesn't matter what I got in my bank account. That's right. God, if we do it the kingdom way, and that's what Jesus did when he said he looked up to heaven. No, he looked to heaven's principles. We are absolutely unlimited as to what God can do if we'll just do it his way. Amen. 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 Would you stand, stand with me, please? I just believe by the Spirit of God. Let's, let's take a few moments. Let's take a few moments and, and let's, let's set our minds, let's set our, uh, our affections on the kingdom of heaven, on the, on the things that are above. Uh, 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 some of you may be, may be like me that's had, had a, a lot of distractions, uh, you know, and, 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 and we've, had, we've had a good many of them over the last week or two. Um, and... You know, it's, you can take this moment right now, just as, as you've received the word. Let's not be, let's, let's not be like, like Pat was sharing and don't just get the revelation of it and then not do it for a little bit. Let's just go ahead and put that into practice right now. Right now. Right now. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Let's just take a few moments just to worship the Father and, and just, just focus on Him as it, as it relates to our finances, as it relates to... Uh, this Christmas season as it as it relates to every aspect of our life. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus right now. I just give you praise. I worship you right now in Jesus' name. Just lift your voices and just start praying. Just start ministering unto Him. You are the great I am. You are the great I am. Father, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for your word. Father, I focus. Father, I thank you that I've been made to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, Father. And I thank you that as I seek first your kingdom, Father, that my supply comes out of that in Jesus. Father, I thank you that your will is done in my life. And your will is prosperity. Your will is healing, Father. Your will uh, is success. Your will is peace, Father. Father, I thank you for your love. I focus on your love for me. You are the God of love. You are love. And I thank you for sharing that love abroad in my heart. Father, I thank you for my job. I thank you for my income. I thank you. Thank you for my business. I thank you for my customers, Father. Father, I thank you for the relationships that I have. Father, I know that you're the, you're the ones that supplied all of these things. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I just thank you for it. I thank you that it's that, and I bless them. I bless those uh, those people that are feeding into my business in Jesus' name. Some of you need to need to bless your boss, because Lord knows you've cursed him over the past few months. You need to bless your boss. You need to bless the company that you work for. You need to be thankful for it. You need to. Uh, you need to expect them to increase in Jesus' name. They should be increasing because you're there. 
some of you don't need to be murmuring and complaining about the work that you have to do. Don't be murmuring and complaining about your uh, the overtime that you have to work. That overtime's providing income for you. It's a way that God is supplying your need. Uh, you need to check your heart, see, uh, make sure that you're not complaining about different aspects of of where you work. Or don't complain about the fact that it doesn't look like that there isn't enough or you don't know how God's going to supply the need. No, you need to get into a heart of thankfulness right now. Listen, I'm telling you, we've got to let, you, you know, we've got to let some of this stuff go. We've got to get out of a Martha mentality and turn over our minds to a Mary mentality. One thing is needful. The supply comes out of that one thing. Glory to God. Father was so thankful tonight in Jesus name glory to your name glory to your name glory to your name go black de shiklo to sukla man ke blo konde sikla man de si hi ke de buko ta ke black de shingla man de siklo to sukho ke de me ke do brenge de shikla ba what I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying is that you have disconnected yourself from the supply that comes out of the kingdom through your natural thinking. That because you've allowed your mind to stay focused on the natural and focused on what's going on in the world, that you have not connected with the supply that has already been given you. And so that as you set your mind on things that are above, as you set your affections on the kingdom of God, as you put the word first place in your life and you attend to the word and you maintain that eye discipline, you maintain that focus on the kingdom of God, that right now in the name of Jesus, supply is being released into your life. Things that have been withheld because of where you have kept your mind are now being released into manifestation in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, a wave of supply is happening right now. Receive it. Receive it. And stay focused on the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Father, we receive it now in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for your love. I, I want, I want y'all to get this. This is... Uh, Father, give me the words. This is an outpouring of his love for you. Is what it is. As, as, as we look to him and as we believe him, release our faith in what he has already done as, 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 as we've, we've stopped limiting him with our thinking here but now we have tapped into supply and thinking that way uh, and believe him as a result of that now what's happened is his love is being poured out connect supply with the love of God. And so will your faith increase. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We receive that in Jesus' name.